These are major characters from the various novels and stories that make up Alistair Reynolds' Revelation Space Universe. Topic: Revelation Space. Topic: Anna Cowrie. Anna Cowrie, an ex-soldier from Sky's Edge, was accidentally placed aboard an interstellar lighthugger and brought to Chasm City. At Chasm City, she participated in Shadow Play, a game in which she attempted to kill the clients so they could brag about the experience should they survive. After one Shadow Play event, she was recruited by the Mademoiselle to infiltrate the crew of the Lighthugger Nostalgia for Infinity. She was also recruited by the Triumvirate of the Nostalgia for Infinity as the gunnery officer, Triumvir Ilya Volova's experiments having killed the previous officer, under the impression that she was heading back home to Sky's Edge. She has a small cameo at the end of Chasm City, although unnamed at the time and not revealed until Redemption Arc. She also has an important part in Redemption Arc organizing the evacuation from Resurgum and again in Absolution Gap. Topic. Captain. John Brannigan. Possibly the oldest character of human origin in the series, he was born in the 21st century. A victim of the Melding Plague, the captain becomes integrated with the lighthugger Nostalgia for Infinity, ultimately becoming one with his ship by the end of Revelation Space. Afterwards he exhibits erratic moods, attempting suicide with Hell-class weapons, before eventually being coerced to convey the refugees from Resurgum and Ararat. The Captain is a very mysterious character, hovering between wisdom and abject madness. He displays respect for Clavian and is the only other human who can compare with him in terms of age, wisdom and experience, although the captain states that he was already an old man when Clavian was born. The captain at one point projects an image of himself from his oldest memories, in which he appears as a normal human in a spacesuit that is hinted at being very similar to those used by NASA astronauts, suggesting he originates from approximately our own time. Throughout Redemption Arc and Absolution Gap, it is hinted that Captain Brannigan was responsible for many immoral acts in his very long, pre-plague life. Brannigan was also said to have been amongst the most extremely modified ultras, likely able to survive prolonged vacuum exposure without a suit, such was the degree of enhancement. Prior to the time of the 80, only Calvin Silveste had the expertise to repair him, which he or his beta level did on several occasions. Sometime before the events of Revelation Space the captain was infected with the melding plague, but Ilya Volova was able to arrest the progress of the disease by keeping him in a reefer sleep casket. Eventually, the plague begins to consume the captain, his casket, and nearby parts of the ship. Volova finds it is possible to converse with Brannigan by warming the core of his brain enough that other equipment can stimulate and read his mental activity. He is rarely lucid, and has little memory, but he provides Volova with occasional companionship and insight during the 15-year journey to Delta Pavonis. During the journey to Resurgum, then to Hades, it is revealed to the reader that one of Brannigan's crimes was the murder of his first officer, Sajaki. 
During a visit to a pattern juggler world, Brannigan had Sajaki's neural pattern overwritten by his own, erasing Sajaki and effectively creating a duplicate of himself, ensuring his survival even if he was unable to recover from the plague. Volova, on piecing together this crime, and requiring a force to counteract Sun Stealer's growing control over the ship, reveals her knowledge to Brannigan before destroying the medical equipment previously holding the plague at bay. The melding plague affects the captain in a different way to other descriptions of the plague in the Revelation Space series. He is somehow merged with the ship, in such a way that he retains his own consciousness, and demonstrates increasing control over the ship and its weapons. Unfortunately the psychological shock of being turned into a 4 km long starship limits the captain's ability to act effectively. The captain sheds large parts of himself during a descent to Gila, where he intends to dock with the planet and alter its orbit so that it rotates at exactly the same speed it orbits. Shortly after landing, Quaich's soldiers infiltrate the nostalgia for infinity and begin to eradicate his presence within the ship. It is not known if the captain dies during this invasion but it is considered very likely and Captain John Armstrong Brannigan is not mentioned again. Before he dies, however, he is able to activate the hypometric weapon and kill Grelier, who was holding Aura hostage. Topic: <laughs> Philip Lasky. The first person to return alive from a visit to the Shrouders, the experience appears to make Lasky severely mentally ill. He experiences a period of lucidity when he explains to Dan Silvestre how to be altered by the pattern jugglers to visit the Shrouders. Lasky then apparently commits suicide, having completed the task the Shrouders had impressed upon him. In the later novel The Prefect, his alpha simulation becomes the intelligence inside the clockmaker, and it is revealed that his Suicide was actually murder. Topic: The Mademoiselle. The Mademoiselle was an emissary of the Shrouders, possibly an artificial intelligence, who was imprinted on the brain of Carini Lefevre when the latter entered Lascaille's shroud. She returned to Chasm City in Lefevre's body and secretly became a major underworld figure, with the ultimate goal of making sure Sun Stealer was prevented from provoking the inhibitors. She transfers a beta simulation of herself to a disguised implant in Anna Corey's head to ensure her mission in Revelation Space was completed. The Mademoiselle's motivations are unclear, and her ruthlessness is apparent when she attempts to destroy a planet to keep the inhabitants from inadvertently alerting the inhibitors. This beta simulation was lost during the struggle against Sun Stealer for control of Nostalgia for Infinity. Sun Stealer subsequently succeeded in reactivating the inhibitors, although it was later destroyed by the humans on board the Nostalgia for Infinity. Her original body was apparently killed by Sky Houseman, but some remnant of her lived on inside Skade's brain, disguising itself as the voice of the Night Council. This manifestation, aware of the failure of the original Mademoiselle to destroy Sun Stealer, instead focused on attempting to ensure that the conjoiners re-acquired the cash weapons in order to defeat the inhibitors. She failed in this endeavor as well, and was presumably killed with Skade. Topic. Triumvir Ilya Volova 
Triumvir Ilya Volova of Nostalgia for Infinity is an implant-free Ultra, and a major character in both Revelation Space and Redemption Arc. At the beginning of Revelation Space, Volova is the keeper of the cash weapons. It is during her search for a means to control these weapons that she enlists Anna Cowry, who was planted in the role by the Mademoiselle, thus setting off a chain of events that continues throughout the novels. She maintains a long friendship with Captain Brannigan, and is the only one to visit him regularly during several years of travel time on the Nostalgia for Infinity in which he is kept in very deep reefer sleep to slow down the onset of melding plague in his body. She later disengages the reefer sleep and warms him up fully, allowing his body to merge with the nostalgia for infinity as the only way to save it from an attack. Volova later, in a plot hatched with Cowrie and spanning decades, helps organize the evacuation of Resurgum, the first human colonized planet doomed to be destroyed by the inhibitors. She ultimately sacrifices herself to prevent the suicide of Captain Brannigan, now indistinguishable from the ship. In doing so, she exposes herself to vacuum, the damage proving almost fatal to her, but preserving the ship and thus the last chance of survival for the inhabitants of Resurgum. She later dies on a suicide mission attacking the inhibitors around Resurgum in an attempt to slow them down, giving the nostalgia for infinity the best possible chance of escape. Her actions apparently had no effect on the inhibitors and all cash weapons that she took were wasted. Topic: <laughs> Calvin Sylveste Calvin Sylveste, son of Lorian Sylveste and father to Dan, is a character that is referenced often in all books of the series, but is most prominent in Revelation Space. He is from an enormously wealthy family of scholars and industrialists, and was one of the most prominent and famous people in the Yellowstone Demarchy during the Belle Epoque. He is mostly referred to because of the scandal of the 80. Calvin was an avid cyberneticist, and wished to find a way in which the human mind could be scanned and uploaded onto a computer matrix, from where it would retain sentience and become a true alpha-level simulation. He rounded up 80 volunteers including himself, all from distinguished families, to be subject to the most highly detailed neural scan in existence. However, the scan would have to be taken so fast that the brain would be permanently destroyed afterwards. The volunteers did not care much about what happened to their physical bodies once the scan had happened, so no one had any disagreements. They expected to form a level of higher consciousness, 80 above the rest of corporeal humanity, and so the experiments were called the transmigration. After the scans were taken, everything appeared to be correct and functioning. He had succeeded. But by one year after the first scan was initialized, and the last ones were being done, there was something wrong. The simulation started freezing, or entering paradoxical loops and shutting down. There was apparently a conceptual flaw in the scan's design, and none of the alpha levels survived except a few, Calvin being one along with Aurora Nerval Lermontov. It was deemed a mass murder on Silvesti's part and he went down in history as such. Also, as he knew that the trans-migratory process had a chance of failure, he cloned himself years before his own scan, at the very beginning of his thoughts on the subject. <laughs> Dan Silvestre 
Dan Silveste, son of Calvin Silveste and one of the central characters of Revelation Space. He is from an enormously wealthy family of scholars and industrialists, was driving force behind the Resurgum expedition and leader of the colony. He is a driven man who had come closer to penetrating a Shrouder enclave than anyone else living, but it is only after this experience that he develops an interest in the Delta Pavonis system. At the beginning of Revelation Space, he is an archaeologist working on Resurgum and studying the ruins of the ancient Amarantan, convinced that their history holds the key to why no alien species has yet survived long enough for humans to make contact. Resurgum may hold important clues, as it appears the entire planet surface was scoured by a coronal mass ejection from the otherwise stable star just as the Amarantan were gaining spaceflight. The nostalgia for infinity arrives in the system searching for Sylveste so that he can heal Captain Brannigan, with the help of his father's beta-level simulation. It becomes apparent that Dan is a biological clone of his father, an immortality contingency plan that was never enacted. Sylveste is taken aboard the ship, which he has been on board before. Once he is aboard, traces of the Sun Stealer entity that have been aboard since that previous time are able to gain influence over the ship and Sylveste. Fighting breaks out for control of the ship. Sylveste, under the influence of Sun Stealer, unwittingly awakens the inhibitors to the existence of mankind by triggering the inhibitor device left near the Hades object. Too late, Dan realizes that he is no longer in control and tries to destroy himself and the inhibitor artifact with anti-lithium he is eventually inducted into the Hades Matrix, an apparent neutron star that is actually a solid sphere of computronium, where he effectively becomes immortal as a component of the computronium. Topic: <laughs> Chasm City. Topic. Tanner Mirabelle Tanner Mirabelle was a former soldier, assassin from Sky's Edge, later becoming security chief to arms trader Coella. A ruthlessly efficient and intelligent fighter, he fails to prevent an ambush, and accidentally causes the death of Coella's wife. His mind is subsequently trawled by Coella, his memories and identity used to create a disguise, allowing Coella to leave system seeking revenge, while Tanner is left for dead as punishment for his failures. Most of our knowledge of Tanner comes from the stolen memories Coella implanted into himself, however these are increasingly tainted by the morality and character of Coella himself, making reliable character description difficult. When Tanner does, for a short while, appear in Chasm City, he seems considerably colder and more amoral than the version we see through the mind's eye of Coella although it is implied that this is because of Coella's torture of him by feeding him to a Hamadryad, an alien monster native to Sky's Edge. Tanner expertly kills Ravich near the end of Chasm City by throwing a knife into his head. A brief life and death scuffle then ensues with Sky Houseman in which Tanner proves the superior combatant and gains the upper hand, only to be killed when Sky bites him in the neck with fangs and venom glands that were implanted in his mouth during his years under the identity of Coella. Coella. 
Coella lived on Skye's Edge in a renovated zoological compound called the Reptile House, from where he sold weapons to both sides involved in the planet's civil war. This led to a bounty being placed on him for war crimes. Coella is fascinated by snakes and reptiles, and aims to capture an adult hamadryad to keep in the reptile house, undertaking frequent hunting trips to achieve this aim. In Chasm City he hires Tanner Mirabelle to provide an expert level of security for himself and his wife, Gitta. However, Gitta is accidentally killed by Mirabelle when she is taken hostage in a revenge attempt by Argent Ravich. In his grief, Coella tortures Mirabelle by having him eaten alive by a near-adult hamadryad despite the fact that all Terran species are poisonous to hamadryads then trawls his memories in order to pursue Ravich, believing Mirabelle dead. Toward the conclusion of Chasm City, we discover that Coella is in fact the immortal Sky Houseman, who slept in reefer sleep whilst his decoy was crucified. Topic: <laughs> Skyler, Sky, Houseman, H. In Chasm City, Sky Houseman is the son of Titus Houseman, the head of security aboard the Santiago. Sky discovers that he is not in fact his father's son, and was an infant Momio awakened by Titus secretly after the death of his own son. As such Sky Houseman is immortal. Sky's story is told in a series of dreams as a counterpoint to the waking life that Tanner Mirabelle experiences throughout Chasm City. The planet Sky's Edge was founded after the flotilla of ships from Earth landed there and mockingly named in Sky's honor as a reminder of the action he took to ensure that the Santiago would be the first of the flotilla to arrive. Sky's greatest crime and best known action was the ejection of entire rings of reefer sleep caskets in order to gain an advantage in speed over the other craft of the flotilla, destroying the Momios or sleepers who were to be the colonists for the new world of Journey's End. This strategy meant the Santiago had less mass than the other ships and so could decelerate later. It thus arrived at Journey's End first. Because of his crime, Houseman was apparently crucified after the other colonists landed on Sky's Edge. However, he managed to get a stand in to be martyred, while Sky himself entered reefer sleep for several decades, before eventually fleeing the planet. Sky Houseman is the center of a pervasive cult, and those who worship him do so as if he were a god. This bizarre cult has developed an indoctrinal virus that alters the infected's perceptions, often giving them physical symptoms similar to stigmata or whole chapters of Sky's life as simulated experiences. The virus is designed to reprogram the victim, in a sense. Sky shows up again as a minor character in Redemption Arc, but calls himself only H. He meets and allies with Naville Clavian. He has killed and replaced the Mademoiselle for the greater good of the galaxy. Houseman captures Clavian and convinces him of the best course of action to combat the inhibitors. By aiding Clavian in setting up the expedition, Sky is largely responsible for the successful evacuation of Resurgum and Clavian's efforts to save most of humanity. Topic. Redemption arc Topic. Antoinette Bax Antoinette Bax is a cargo ship pilot in the Rust Belt. 
She is harassed by police authorities in the area until she rescues Clavian, which draws her into the conflict between Clavian and the conjoiners. She goes with Clavian to Resurgum and Ararat and participates in the battle against Triumvir Volova. During the events of Absolution Gap, the nostalgia for infinity leaves Ararat. Antoinette opts to remain on the planet and is thus caught in the inhibitor bombardment of the planet although it is implied that the pattern jugglers may have absorbed her into the ocean before the bombardment commenced. <laughs> Naville Clavian Naville Clavian is one of the oldest conjoiners and can be credited with playing an overwhelming part in saving the human race from the inhibitors. His actions throughout Redemption Arc set the scene for the evacuation of Resurgum and steers all factions of humanity towards stopping the inhibitors. Born in the 22nd century, he originally fought against the conjoiner faction as a senior military leader with the coalition. In that role, he had designed orbital lasers set above Mars, and led assaults on the conjoiners on Mars, earning the epithet the Butcher of Tharsis. He is captured at one point and held prisoner by Galliana for months, but she treats him well and refrains from infiltrating his mind with nanobots. To his surprise, instead she tries to convince him of the conjoiner's merits, and eventually releases him. Naville later visits the conjoiners as an ambassador to try to come to a peace deal, but he and the conjoiners are sabotaged by a large force led by Naville's brother Warren. After being injured in battle, he awakens to find that Galliana has interfaced nanobots with his brain as the only way to save him, as his brother has faked his death. In order to escape Mars and the invasion by the forces of neural purity, he accepted the full conjoiner implants to allow for the conjoiner's escape of Mars, which requires a rapid deceleration into Mars's moon, Phobos. After a non-specific time, Clavian leaves with the rest of the conjoiners in the first relativistic interstellar spacecraft that can carry live human beings. Before leaving Mars, Clavian meets and befriends Remontoir, and the two remain close and loyal friends for centuries. Centuries later, Clavian does not use the newer conjoiner implant technology as SCADE and other conjoiners do and continues to rely on his outdated and old implants, which enables him to escape a growing threat from a secret infiltration from within the conjoiners, by a sinister personality that has taken control of SCADE. Clavian defects from the compromised conjoiners with the intention of joining the Demarchists. Clavian departs from the Yellowstone system for the Resurgum system along with several other conjoiners and underworld figures from Chasm City. Clashing in the Resurgum system, Clavain's allies manage to stall Skade long enough for the colony to be evacuated. After 23 years of relative peace after founding a colony on the juggler planet of Ararat, Clavian and Skade have their final encounter, where he accepts a deal with the dying Skade to allow a Caesarian section to be performed on her to recover the unborn aura in exchange for the simultaneous torturing to the death of Clavian by the unwilling Scorpio. However, Clavian has the last laugh as he instructs Scorpio to bury him at sea, where the pattern jugglers absorb him and he is reunited with Galliana and Felca at last. <laughs> Skade Skade appears in the book Redemption Arc and, to a lesser extent, in Absolution Gap. 
SCADE is a conjoiner, and one of the more recent ones. She is unusual amongst conjoiners in that she has no fear of being away from the mother nest, having been trained in infiltration and special ops. She is a member of the Closed Council and also the Inner Sanctum, both executive bodies within the conjoiner mother nest. Supposedly, she also works for the Ultra Secret Night Council, although in Redemption Arc it is hinted that the Night Council does not exist at all as a conjoiner body, but is actually an avatar for the mental structure of the Mademoiselle that infiltrated Skade's mind during a top secret mission to Chasm City. Skade is expert at conjoiner technology, being able to unleash neural attacks on other conjoiners and peer past security divisions even those within the minds of other closed council members. Clavian is the only person able to survive her attacks, doing so repeatedly throughout their encounters until he voluntarily allows her to enter his mind. He explains that her attacks were simply too sophisticated to penetrate his outdated implants describing it as, "...like trying to hack into a clockwork calculator." When Clavian flees the comet containing the mother nest, he snaps the anchor tethers of his ship rather than disengaging them from the comet's surface first, and one of them slices Skade in two through the upper torso. She survives with little more than her original head, mounted on an android body. Later, when a ship she is in is about to be destroyed by weapons deployed by Clavian, her ship jettisons an escape pod containing only her head, with an interface enabled to keep her head alive for long enough for the escape pod to rendezvous with another conjoiner ship. At some point between Redemption Arc and Absolution Gap a new body is grown for her and her head is reattached. Skate is later mortally wounded in battle on the planet Ararat, and makes a deal to allow the unborn Aura to be recovered from her womb before she dies in exchange for Naville Clavian being tortured to death by Scorpio. Skade means harm", in Danish and Norwegian. Other conjoiner characters, such as Remontoir and Klepsidra, also have meaningful names. <laughs> <laughs> Warren Clavian Warren Clavian is Naville's older brother. Warren and Naville are both senior military officers of the Coalition, which has long been in warfare with the Conjoiners. The war with the Conjoiners has left Warren with only one eye, having lost the other and sustaining other severe injuries in combat with the Conjoiners and with the robotic worms on Phobos. Their differing experiences of the war lead Naville and Warren to fall into a dispute just as Naville is about to make a diplomatic visit to the conjoiner headquarters. Warren later fabricates evidence that Naville was massacred by the conjoiners upon his arrival, as an excuse to resume hostilities, at which point Naville loses what remaining attachment he had to Warren. Warren is last seen secure in his position among the coalition leadership. Topic: Felka. Felka is the product of an experiment carried out by Galliana on Mars during the early days of the Conjoined, by which nanobots were permanently interfaced with Felka early in her embryonic development. She develops into somewhat of an autistic savant, incapable of distinguishing human faces or any normal social interaction, though she has an advanced intellectual capacity, even among the conjoiners. 
She spends much of her youth single-handedly operating and keeping alive the Great Wall of Mars, a massive robotic terraforming entity designed by Sandra Voi and critically damaged in the Coalition Conjoiner War. Felka is rescued by Clavian in the evacuation of the Conjoiner's nest on Mars, shortly before the Conjoiners become the first living humans to depart the Solar System, aboard a spacecraft clandestinely manufactured inside of Phobos. Felka later forms one of her closest friendships on the first extrasolar planet the Conjoiners land on, Diadem, with Iverson, the sole survivor of a prior colony that had been planted there from an AI spacecraft that had raised human colonists from embryos after reaching the planet. Iverson and Felka share a common passion for studying emergent phenomena, including a low-level intelligence formed by a planet-wide network of ice-dwelling worms. Felka makes considerable progress toward a more normal capability for social interaction during her friendship with Iverson, although Clavian later find out Iverson is in fact, set her home another member of the Diadem colony who killed all the others. Setterholm attacks Clavian so Clavian kills him. Centuries later, Felka lives in the conjoiner mother nest, still pursuing experiments in emergent phenomena, when she departs from the infiltrated conjoiners with Clavian. She eventually ends up on the colony on the planet Ararat and is taken by the pattern jugglers there, presumably absorbed by them. Clavain's last requests after the final Skade encounter, which results in his death, suggests that Clavain's funeral, which resulted in his body being dumped into the pattern juggler mass, was observed by two women, one older, one younger, appearing from the mass of juggler growth. Whether Clavian was ever absorbed into the juggler matrix was left unsaid. Topic. Galliana Galliana was one of the most prominent founding members of the Conjoiners, a group that began on Mars and became linked with each other in a partial transhumanist collective consciousness through experimenting with interfacing their brains with nanotechnology and AI components. Galliana captured Naville Clavian during the Conjoiner Coalition War and held him captive on Mars for several months, but rather than the harsh treatment Naville expects due to Coalition propaganda, Galliana attempts to befriend him and convince him of the Conjoiner's merits. Galliana later leaves on an interstellar exploration mission where she encounters inhibitor machinery that consumes her crew and places her under permanent mind control. Skade captures Galliana's reefer casket in an attempt at ransom but Clavian decides that destroying Skade is more important than the possibility of healing Galliana and so detonates pin-head munitions planted on Skade's ship by Scorpio. Skade escapes the explosion by placing her head in a torpedo and having it fired towards the pursuing conjoiner fleet. It is implied at the conclusion of Redemption Arc that Galliana saved an imprint of herself in the oceans of Ararat. This version is reunited with Clavian and Felka when the pattern jugglers absorb them in their entirety. Remontoir Remontoir is one of the most prominent of the founding conjoiners. He plays a leading role in the defense and evacuation of the conjoiner's main nest on Mars when Naville Clavian is first inducted into the conjoined. A century later, in 2303, he assists a Ravel Veda in the repair of her ship Hirondelle, after her encounter with Captain Run 7. 
He is then betrayed by her and becomes the prisoner of Run 7. He becomes the object of Run 7's sadism until he is rescued by the conjoiners. Centuries later, he, Clavian, and Skade work together among the top leadership of the conjoiners. After Clavian leaves the conjoiners, Remontoir also ends up following him and turning against Skade. Remontoir was responsible for originally capturing Scorpio, who tried to kill him then, but would eventually work closely with him. When Remontoir learns that Clavian has been killed, he pauses and focuses all his thoughts on mourning Clavian for a full ten seconds, which is seen as a profound act of devotion for a conjoiner, although later, he says to Scorpio that he hasn't done truly grieving yet. Another conjoiner, Weather, who belongs to another faction that has been out of contact with Clavian and Remontoir for centuries, reveres Remontoir as the greatest leader of the early conjoiners. Remontoir's last action in Absolution Gap is to try to draw an inhibitor swarm away from nostalgia for infinity. The outcome of this engagement is not shown, but the leaders of the Infinity crew consider him unlikely to survive after his last transmission, although his final status is ultimately left unknown. In the short story, Galactic North, it is revealed that Remontoir's experiences were merged into the conjoiner collective memory at some point in time. They are kept preserved for thousands of years, and at one point used create a likeness of him to negotiate with a Ravel Veda, whom he met with in Galactic North. Remontoir's name, like that of the conjoiner Clepsidra in the Prefect, is a term from horology. Topic. Scorpio. Scorpio, a pig, is an ex-crime lord from Chasm City. His earliest memories indicate that he was once part of the crew aboard a pleasure craft. When the craft was attacked by a passing lighthugger, he found himself, and fellow crew pigs, used as game in a sadistic hunt by the human invaders. Being the only pig to survive, and with the revelation that, even while as crew aboard the space yacht, he was a slave to human masters, Scorpio develops an intense hatred of humankind which drives his rise to infamy, becoming a feared figure in the Rust Belt. Although not described in detail, it appears that he is eventually captured and detained by the Demarcist authorities, being transported to likely execution. He was found captive on a Demarcist vessel Clavian attacks at the beginning of Redemption Arc. After Clavian's defection, Scorpio and Remontoir head to a habitat orbiting Yellowstone in order to stop Clavian. After a long chase, Scorpio becomes part of the rescue party sent to Resurgum System to save everyone on the planet from the inhibitor machine. On Ararat, Scorpio becomes the leader of the settlement after Clavian goes off to consult his losses. After Remontoir and the rest of the conjoiners arrive in System, Scorpio heads to the island to consult Clavian. After they arrive on Skade's iceberg, Scorpio is forced to kill Clavian in order to save Aura. Scorpio and those that were on the Nostalgia for Infinity when it left Ararat travel to Yellowstone, only to see it utterly destroyed by the inhibitors, then head to Gila in order to find Quach and negotiate with the Shadows. In a twist of plans, Scorpio, Kauri, Vasco and Aura, after Scorpio destroy the bridge crossing Absolution Gap, decide to let the Scrimshaw suit carrying the Shadow Envoy fall to its destruction with Quach's Cathedral. His fate after this is unknown all that is said is that 
After that, he didn't remember very much. Although it is implied that he is the one accompanying Aura on planet Ararat in the prologue and epilogue of Absolution Gap. This would, however, make Scorpio over 400 subjective years old by Yellowstone's calendar though he has only lived through 60 or so due to relativistic effects and prolonged time in reefer cryo sleep. He had previously stated he would be unlikely to reach a body age beyond his fifties, but how much of this predicted life expectancy was due to his biology and how much to his dangerous lifestyle is unclear as few other hyper-pigs are major characters. Scorpio's pig biology leaves him at a disadvantage here in space travel as it becomes clear the repeated freeze, thaw of reefer sleep is taking an enormous toll on him and shortening his life. It is implied that Scorpio may not survive another freezing. Humans such as the conjoiner characters and even baseline unaugmented humans are far more resistant to the effects of reefer sleep. In the epilogue of Absolution Gap, it is strongly implied that Scorpio indeed lived way beyond his expected lifespan. Hundreds of years after the events on Gila, Aura visits Ararat with a stout guardian protector who is implied to be Scorpio. This conclusion is also supported by a line in the prologue, wherein Aura reflects that she is glad, "...she didn't have his acuity with smells," referring to her guardian. It is referenced several times in Absolution Gap that pigs have a more heightened sense of smell than humans. Topic. Absolution Gap Topic. Aura The daughter of Anna Cowrie and a renegade from Resurgum named Thorn, Aura is altered in utero in the Hades Matrix to convey knowledge of advanced technologies in order to fight the inhibitors. She is also adapted with conjoiner technology. At one point, Skade kidnaps her and becomes her surrogate mother. She is born when she is cut from the dying Skade, which Skade allows in exchange for Naville Clavain's death. She later falsifies her own memories and assumes the name Rashmika Else to gather intelligence on Hela. In the prologue and epilogue of the book roughly 400 years after the Gila mission, she has returned to Ararat as the greenfly machines are consuming the galaxy. She decides to head to the Pleiades star cluster, which other humans have already retreated to this colony later features in Galactic North. Rashmika else Rashmika is the assumed name that Aura takes as she covertly inserts herself into Quachiest society in a bid to gain access to Quach himself and thus the mysterious shadows. Rashmika is unaware of this for most of the story, as she has also manipulated her own Aura's memories. Instead, she believes she is on a quest to find her missing brother that happens to take her to the cathedrals of the permanent way. Rashmika is imbued with the unusual ability to know with 100% certainty and seeming success rate when someone is lying. This enables her to become useful to Quach. She originally believes that humanity should negotiate with the Shadows, a race that claims to exist in a parallel Bryn world to ours, but Scorpio convinces her otherwise by when he discovers that this caused the last race to do so to be wiped out. 
At the end of the novel, Rashmika's shell of false memories begins to break down, and she remembers her previous identity as Aura. Quaich Quaich was taken on board the lighthugger Gnostic Ascension by Queen Yasmina in order to scout solar systems they encountered. During the exploration of Gila, the moon of a gas giant called Haldora, Quaich's shuttle is destroyed and his love, Morwina, is killed when his autopiloted exploration ship accelerates too quickly in order to rescue him. Incidentally, the Gnostic Ascension is also destroyed when it returns to the system. The combination of this near-death experience, and the detection that the gas giant planet Haldora disappears intermittently for a fraction of a second, cause Quaich to succumb to an indoctrinal virus. As a consequence, over the following decades, a multitude of churches are established on Gila, each centered on a mobile cathedral that constantly moves around Gila, keeping the enigmatic Haldora in view. During the time on Gila, Quaich acquires a digital envoy from the Shadows, a mysterious race that tries to communicate with our universe through Haldora. The question of contact with the shadows is a major element in the novel Absolution Gap. Constantly fearful of losing sight of Haldora, Quaich concocts a plan to stop Hela's rotation using a lighthugger's engines. The lighthugger he attempts to capture for this plan is the nostalgia for infinity, the crew of which are able to repel his assault and take over the Lady Morwina. In the aftermath of the fight, Quaich is killed while trying to escape the cathedral. Grillier Grillier was originally employed on the lighthugger Gnostic Ascension by Queen Yasmina, the captain. His job as Surgeon General seemed to involve constantly cloning the extremely masochistic Queen new bodies so she could repeatedly torture herself to death. He also used some of the bodies himself. Quaich discovers that he is a pedophile, that he carried out various immoral acts on them before they were fully grown and then claimed that they had not developed properly. Quaich eventually uses this to blackmail him into helping him overthrow Yasmina. He is then employed by Quaich to generate indoctrinal viruses to maintain his and others' religious feelings. When the nostalgia for infinity arrives on Gila, Grillier attempts to hold Aura hostage, prompting John Brannigan to kill him with a hypometric weapon, removing parts of him from space time. Topic: The Prefect. Topic: <laughs> The Clockmaker. A robot originally created by Siam or Sylveste Institute for Artificial Mentation to study the Shrouder technology, it incorporates an alpha-level simulation of Philip Lesky, the first man to return from a shroud alive. After being sent into a shroud again, it returned a docile entity that did little but as its name implies, make intricate clocks until going berserk at Siam killing or maiming numerous people before Panoply stopped it. Having absorbed shrouder technology, conventional human weaponry has little effect on it, an extremely strong EMP can disable it for a little while and it can be contained in an extremely strong magnetic field. 
Because of Lesky being murdered involuntary destroyed by the alpha simulation creation process and the Shrouder visits, it developed a great hatred against Siam and Panoply and expressed it with complexly cruel mechanisms including attacking the head prefect with a scarab, a device that would kill her if she fell asleep and could not be removed. Tom Dreyfus promised to investigate Lesky's murder in exchange for Clockmaker's help against Aurora, the antagonist of the novel. <laughs> Tom Dreyfus Tom Dreyfus is a prefect and later a senior prefect, an agent with an elite investigative police force around the glitter band known as the Panoply. He is heavily involved in the clockmaker incident. He is the central character of the prefect. He was deeply affected by the loss of his wife, during this incident, and so he had his own memories of the events erased. He was also a great friend of the Supreme Prefect at the time, Jane Almonier. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Diamond Dogs, Turquoise Days. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Doctor Trintignant. Dr. Trintignant is one of the main characters in Diamond Dogs, Turquoise Days. He also makes a reappearance in the short story, Grafenwalder's Bestiary. Although little is known of his personal background, Trintignant is revealed to be an overzealous cyberneticist who worked with Calvin Silveste on the AD project. His ambition becomes obsession, but he was forced to abandon the project when test subjects became scarce. In order to pursue his thirst for knowledge, he experiments on himself, changing his physical body drastically. In Diamond Dogs, Trintignant is hired by Roland Child to go on an expedition to visit a mysterious alien structure known as the Blood Spire. Trintignant transforms Chilled and Richard Swift into sleek-looking mechanical dogs, or diamond dogs. When Swift comes back from the spire to change back into his original form, he discovers that Trintignant has committed suicide by dismantling himself with his own surgical machinery. Trintignant proclaims what he did to Chilled and Swift as his magnum opus, and he would rather die than take them apart. However, in the short story, Grafenwalder's Bestiary, Trintignant is retrieved by the former denizen, Ursula Goodglass, who electronically reconnects his body parts, but apparently does not reassemble his body. Her husband, Edric Goodglass, is revealed to be Trintignant himself at the end of the story, and it is hinted that Trintignant has turned Grafenwalder into one of his test subjects. Topic. See also Revelation Space Universe Factions in Revelation Space Races in Revelation Space Locations in Revelation Space <laughs>